gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel And my last video for tonight I'm typing we hours in the morning as of 1.05 a.m. Uh, early, early we hours in the morning on Monday morning. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for coming to my channel uh, and looking at my videos and sharing my videos and subscribing to my channel. Keep doing those things, especially the likes, the shares, and the subscribing. Thank you so much. But let's get on to this um, new video I'm putting out on Merit to Medicine that aired on this past Sunday, um, the 17th, and it was season 7, episode 10. And the title was called Battle Down South. Okay, the first couple of episodes or a couple of scenes in this episode, they got Toya and Eugene showing off their beautiful mansion of a house to uh, Dr. Samoa and Cecil. They're over there getting their little digs, looking at the 25 feet ceilings and the custom made uh, bathrooms. Uh, Toya and um, Eugene have a six bedroom, eight baths. Uh, house and has a custom made wine cellar, big old master bedroom, big old master uh, bathroom, two story closet, a makeup counter, or area where she gets some makeup done. Then he has a uh, Eugene have a man cave down downstairs. Okay, and they just showing it off. And Cecil is in the real estate business thus far. Uh, and he is saying, if it don't work out between the Bush and the Harris family, guess what? They can sell this house. Now, like, now, season, now you wrong. You know you wrong for that. Okay, keep hope alive. Uh, definitely, Toya's taste is very exuberant. And she's played, or I should say her husband played a pretty penny. Or he's paying a pretty penny with that mortgage. But, hey, that's just how they get down. That's what they do. Then we got Cecil. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, well, when they're over there at um, Eugene's and Toy's house, they having a little barbecue in the back. And Cecil and Simone are introducing for their 23rd wedding anniversary to go on another couple's trip. And that's pretty much what they get to talking about at the table. And some of them, well, Toy is saying, well, I know we're not going to ask Quad to come. And she said, no, Quad is coming. Uh, it was my fault that it was, like, bad. And I assume the worst, our last... Uh, vacation couple's trip but hey she's coming i want her there so they pretty much squashed it toy don't think they're gonna have any fun <laughs> but it is what it is then we go to contessa and uh dr scott they don't call themselves going to their first counseling session before they go in she's telling scott to make sure his phone is not on put it on silent whatever vibrate just don't let it ring while they're in the session well lo and behold by the time they get in that particular session what happens the phone rings um, Scott gets up saying he has to take this phone call and he walks out leaving Katessa there with the therapist and they both looking at each other like they're stupid and of course Katessa looked like she want to open up her mouth and just, just tell all and we knew it had to do something about she resenting uh, having to have to quit her program just that and the third because she felt so guilty about not being a good husband, I mean, a good wife, not being a good mother, and this, that, and the third. I'm like, Contessa, don't nobody want to hear that same story episode after episode after episode. Girl, please, you should have just stayed in school and sucked it up and been done with and then come back and get therapy for about six months, okay? But it just is what it is. Um, then the therapist tries to go in and tell once Scott comes back, you know, how that made her feel, this, that, and third. Scott is trying, you know, he acting like he's clueless, but he, he just wants things his way. And I can see what Katessa was talking about. He more about getting his way what he wants and the rest just, you know, falls for the wayside. Seems like he's more that I make the breaking, I bring it home, you fry it up in the pan and take care of the kids in the home. I go out there and do what I got to do. Now, if you really want to help me, okay, but guess what? I'm still going to have you to do your mother oh excuse me your motherly duties as well as your wife duties okay so i think that's kind of unfair of scott uh wanting her to bring home the bacon and fry it up as well and then she takes sole responsibility of the upbringing and the caring and the supervision of their kids so yeah i saw her point there very clearly today this episode um Scott feel like he was basically supporting her at first when she wanted to go 
uh, extend her career goals and get another degree under her belt uh, dealing with sports medicine or occupational medicine. I, I don't know what it was, but basically I think I'm in that same realm of what she wanted to get a new specialty in. And, you know, he's saying about once it started, he basically was like, uh-uh, this ain't going to work. I need my wife back at home with me as well as with the kids, more so with the kids, okay? And um, the, th the, therapist, the therapist was like, well, okay, what what are we really needing? What are you needing uh, from your wife and what are you needing from your husband? So, um, what's his name? Scott was saying he didn't want Contessa to be so judgmental of everything he do say or have an opinion on and she was saying she needed more hugs more embraces more kissing more intimacy and whatever so that was a good start uh hopefully they work it out if not just is what it is good dr jackie dr jack is over there calling she's you know riding home or hopefully going home but she said she was going over to quad house that's why she was calling quad to see what she was doing and had she had cooked and she's like no honey i just got back in town i ain't trying to cook i ain't thinking about cooking it just is what it is then um dr jacket act like she kind of upset with that situation now she feels like either she's gonna have to go home and cook for her husband curtis or she's gonna go buy some food but she was just trying to get some doggy bags from Quad uh, to tie her over. But, of course, she goes in and say, okay, okay, I hear what you're saying, all right. Uh, but I am having a book covering reveal party. I want you to come. You have to wear your favorite shade of pink. Uh, I want it to be pink like the uh, vagina. And, you know, that's a whole lot of mess Jack was talking about. She's just over the top, I see. And um, Quad said, okay, I understand where you're coming from. I'll do what I can. But, uh, my vagina is more brown looking. <laughs> and that was like, oh, I laughed on that one. That was funny. But uh, Dr. Uh, Jack, she's like, oh, okay, whatever. You know I need you to do it though, okay? So just a situation. And uh, just going back from there, we're going to go on into Dr. Heavenly's uh, party. Because that was like the piece de resistance where the whole episode came to fruition came to heads and we could see that Jackie actually did unapologetically put uh, Buffy Purcell's information out there. And instead of David going and getting Dr. Jackie husband together to say, why did your wife put my wife on the spot like that telling our business? She's just acting all nonchalant like nothing happened and he happy-go-lucky and, and he could care less. And I'm like, what kind of husband are you? do you have uh, Purcell? Buffing because he didn't care too much of you being embarrassed or, or or you felt some kind of way for the negative. He wasn't like trying to pat you on your shoulder to see where you are, right? So I'm like, I don't know. You need to start with home first before you try to jump on Jackie's uh, case, even though she need an ass whooping too, allegedly, because she had no business of taking a conversation. You just scratched the surface with her trying to tell her about for her to just put you all the way out there in your business. Okay, thank you. You're going to come on stage and pick up where she left off about, yeah, women need to be empowering each other and we need to take our failures and take them into successes and all this stuff Jack was all on the stage about. Okay, but um um coming to the party, Dr. Helen is trying to shade everybody, especially Mariah talking about the pink that she wore, it looked like she got an infection. She need to bypass uh Dr. Simone go straight to jacket. <laughs> like both of them can give her antibiotics, uh Dr. Heavenly, if she did so have an infection. So what are you talking about? I think you need to stay in your dental area instead of worry about medicine. <laughs> okay, worry about teeth. Don't worry about the uh human anatomy, okay? But anyway, Dr. Helm is just crazy, 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 crazy. But anyway, getting back to Dr. Jackie's speech, she up on stage telling these folks everything about her, her business, the JJs, keeping it clean, keeping it fresh. And we, you know, taking back our vagina instead of putting it in the diagnosis of strictly men and men tell us what to do with our uh, vagina and this, that, and the third. And so uh, she was making a lot of sense until she put 
uh, Buffy per se or Biz to my. Yeah, you know, uh, we have our own weaknesses. We have our own flaws, and uh, you know, we have our issue. I can't have a baby, and uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Buffy Purcell. She can't have no baby. She's infertile. <laughs> like, wait a minute, Jackie. No, you didn't, Doctor Heavenly. She has a YouTube channel herself, and she was over there making a mockery out of Buffy too because she was sitting up saying Jackie didn't say that Jackie said it on TV in live in large and in color okay on tonight's episode well yesterday's uh, episode which because it's Monday now but it was Sunday when we were watching it and I'm like girl Jackie you can't even keep your mouth closed how in the world are you gonna sit up there put somebody on front street that didn't even ask to be on front street and went after your party after you get off the stage and everything settled and done you got people going over trying to uh feel sorry or have a pity party for buffy and she had to sit there and explain what you should have been saying that she's not infertile she just has a hard time carrying a child and i mean like i was mad at uh buffy i was mad at uh her husband but not getting um uh, Jack is straight on. If you want to tell your business, find that hunky door, do so all day, every day. But when it comes to my uh, truth and what I told you in confidence, you had no right. You had no right, no business, nothing to telling my uh, business out to the public. That was so tacky and, and, and insensitive as well. But anyway, we go from this part. Jackie don't offer no apologies, no nothing. They just all, you know, kind of gathering around Buffy to say, is that true what Jackie said? And I'm so sorry for you. Well, you know, you could try this, try that, and try to get, you know, pregnant, this, that, third. And then you got Buffy sitting up there trying to explain everything from A to Z and why she don't need to adopt or whatever. She just has to be, you know, patient and hopefully a baby will stick in her womb and stay there for the duration of uh, carrying the baby until the nine months are over, then she delivered. But child, she put her in a very impossible position. And none of the women had guts enough to sit there and tell Jackie. Now, Jackie, you know you were wrong. You were so viciously wrong for putting out that girl uh business in the street. Are you crazy, girl? Are you drink are you drinking something? Did you take something like some illicit drugs or something? Oh, you got him. Because that was just so out of order. That's what all of them should have did. Sold her up from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. But then nobody say anything. So I'm charging file on all those women there. Every last one of them. Okay. But then uh, after the little get together that um, Jackie called herself getting to and Curtis over there giving her all accolades and all this, that, and third. And I'm sitting there looking like, are you crazy? Are you serious? You 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 vouching for what your wife just said up there? But, you know, he's he kind of crazy anyway. He's retired and he has to be close to her. He, he ain't got no other money. And she's employing him as a project manager of her building. Now, go figure that one. Okay, all these high power, very influential, lucrative women in their careers and they're taking care of their husbands. I cannot. I cannot. Okay, but anyway, moving on from there. Um, what's her name? Dr. Simone goes on to say that she wants to have another um, couple's trip. And she's going to be, I don't know if she's putting a bill or she's finding a location and Bravo's paying for it. Who knows? Okay, who really cares? But she tells the women that she wants everybody to go, including Quad, even though she's not married anymore. She still can learn from this experience. They're uh, using a 23rd anniversary to go to uh, Los Cabos, Mexico. And they're going to be, I guess, talking about couple. It's like a couple therapy type session. That Simone feels her and Cecil are like the etiquette professionals on how to keep your marriage fresh and going. <laughs> I'm like, but two seasons ago, weren't you having problems? Weren't you thinking about getting divorced from uh, Cecil? Honey, girl, please sit down. Sit down somewhere. But anyway, um, they all go on the trip and... Um, Dr. Simone saying she has a penthouse, an extra penthouse suite for somebody to have. And, but they have to prove to her that they deserve it. So she makes up some kind of dance contest. And the participants was David and Buffy. Forget them. They Neither one of them can dance. Jack and Curtis just waved the white flag. He said, we ain't doing it. You know, he didn't ask Jack if she really wanted to do it. He just made the executive decision without her. But since they're married, she, he felt that she he was talking for her too. So it was a no-go. 
for them to be doing any dancing. Contessa and Scott went out there. I don't know what the hell they were. I don't know what Contessa was doing, but uh, her husband, Scott, was trying to break dance. I'm like, you too old to be down now. I hope you don't took your meds, meaning uh, arthritic med, arthritis type medication, as well as pain relief, because you're going to need it. You're going to feel it, honey. Uh, and then we had Damon and Dr. Helen out there. Dr. Helen was trying to just twerk or whatever. Her whole body was shaking. It was looking like a hot mess. But Damien caught himself breakdancing too, trying to spin on his head. No, he got some some uh, weight on that. We don't snap that neck in the head. Men dead as a donut. But, you know, anyway, moving on from there. Quas, so she wasn't doing it. Mariah and her husband saying they weren't doing it. So, uh, anyway, Damien and Dr. Heaven end up winning. And I think it was because uh, Damien was sitting up there trying to roll over his head and do some crazy, oh, all God-forsaken uh, God things, okay? But anyway, uh, that was Married to Medicine. It was kind of lackluster. Only part that I was waiting on was did Jackie actually say on stage that Buffy Parcell was infer infertile? And she actually did, and she didn't apologize for it. She didn't throw up bad play. We would have been scrapping up on that stage, okay? <laughs> I would have went up that, on that stage and told them people that Jackie uh, really, something I gave to her in confidence. She pretty much broke the trust and told y'all. I would have been telling them everything. Then cuss her ass out and went home. <laughs> But see, that's what I would have done. And, that, you know, Barbara would have loved that action. But she didn't say nothing. And I'm like, honey, it didn't hurt you too bad because I sure would have been clowning on this TV. They wanted drama. I was going to bring it there today, tonight for them. Okay, I was going to bring it. But she didn't do that. Her husband didn't do that. And Jack's still looking like, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I ain't doing nothing wrong. She is infertile. Is she not? Can she have kids? Can she keep a kid in her womb for a certain amount of time? To this process. Can't you do it? Why well, ain't not in? <laughs> I was like, Jack, what's wrong with you, girl? You need counseling. You you like tell everybody else business. But when it's talking about you and your business, you all hush, 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 hush. But that's all I got for Marital Medicine's uh, episode that aired tonight. Again, the title was Battle Down South, Season 7, Episode 10. Get into it. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about the subject matter. The um, This particular episode, was it boring? Was it lackluster was it okay was it a great showing how can i didn't tell me honey because i told y'all what i felt so it's only good and fitting that you tell me but y'all take care of yourselves and i will see y'all next video Bye bye